it's always refreshing to see a game that breaks free of such traditional constraints as cliche-ridden plots, done-to-death genres, and the basics of logical thinking. Ah, a game that makes no sense at all. How refreshing. If you're in the mood for something that was apparently designed on another planet and yet is still curiously relaxing, you have to pick up Sony ImageSoft's Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong Nu. It's oriental mysticism combined with characters that look like refugees from the Yellow Submarine. The player takes on the role of Rin, just your everyday guy who wakes up one morning and notices that his soul is missing. It's tough getting through the day without a soul. You're cranky, listless. It's a lot like skipping breakfast, but much, much worse. It doesn't take Rin long to realize that if he ever wants to appreciate the music of Aretha Franklin again, he's going to have to take a trip to the soul-eating island of Tong Nu otherwise known as this big green floating head. Otherwise known as a slightly modified photograph of head designer Osamu Sato. Sato was the winner of a nationally sponsored contest by Sony to find and support talented multimedia artists. He also wrote all of the music in Eastern Mind. The island of Dongdu is also a bridge to four element-based lands. There's the land of dreaming, all based in water. The land of desire, all based in metal. The land of life, all based in wood. And the land of time, all based in fire. If at any time I had happened to run into the land of Oz, all based in the classic books by L. Frank Baum, I don't think it would have faced. So you're wandering around the big green head trying to find your soul. Be careful because death traps abound. For example, here you got five columns of fire. One takes you where you want to go, one gives you a nifty present, and one kills you dead. But that's not as bad as it might seem. The fact of the matter is that you won't get very far in this game until you get killed. A lot. Nine times to be exact. Yes, one of the major themes of Eastern Mind is reincarnation. All that silly Rin and his soul business kind of gets washed down the drain, and you have a completely different task to fulfill your new life, or lives, as the case may be. When you die, you go down into the roots of the Tree of Life, where you find various eyeballs, noses, and mouths. Pick one of each, and it determines what your new life will be. This is a little troublesome later on, because you have to find a combination you haven't chosen already. Still, it's a neat idea. When you've chosen your new identity, you shoot up the trunk of the Tree of Life, and you get briefed on your mission in life. You may even get a special tool to help you, like a wrench or a wooden disc. Then, when you accomplish your goal, you die. I wish life really made that much sense. Speaking of not making much sense, let's talk about the graphics. Well, the pictures are certainly very sharp and clear, but the motion's kind of schizophrenic. Sometimes it's smooth as silk, other times it looks like a friggin' frame-a-second slideshow. It's a little distracting, but I almost wonder whether it's a deliberate move on the part of our good friend, the big green head, Osamu Sato. Oh, come on. Deliberate? Why would anyone do something like that deliberately? That doesn't make sense. Maybe you've missed the point here, but none of this game makes sense. That doesn't mean it still can't be cool. Each time you complete a life mission, you get a thingy with the character's symbol on it. You need all nine of them to open the gate of Tong Nu. Hey, that part almost makes sense. It's a straightforward goal. Cool. Along the way, there are lots of items that can help you, especially the Tong Nu illustrated book. It's got maps, character descriptions, and lots of other useful stuff. If you don't actually find this book in the game, you can trade for it at the Phantom Marketplace. Just look for a rock with a big eyeball on it. Then there's all the fun and bizarro people you'll meet along the way. I think using the word people to describe these guys is going a little far. The closest thing to a humanoid in this game is the big green head. Well, anyway, there's the King of Desire, Ying and Yang, the computer guarding twins, hyperactive beanbag boy. That's not his name. Can't prove it by me. There's even a little sex in this game. Yeah, in a thoroughly abstract, apparently pointless kind of way. The really funny thing is the lip service paid to protecting minors. Before you enter the extremely provocative room of the Helix Palace, you are asked your age. If your number is too low, the scenes all have big black bars over them and make no sense whatsoever. I shouldn't have to remind you again, but the game itself makes no sense whatsoever. But if, being a clever person, you leave the room and return, the program completely forgets that it's already asked your age and it asks again, giving you a chance to lie your knickers off and see the sex room in all its glory. Not that we endorse you doing something that evil for even a second. The main annoyance in Eastern Mind, other than the fact that it makes absolutely no sense at all, is that navigation frequently takes forever. 
You click and click and click, and something like a spiral staircase can really take forever. But at least it's easy. Everything is mouse clicks here, except the occasional typing of answers. You won't have any trouble figuring out the interface. You may, on the other hand, have considerable trouble figuring out the point. Well, I don't mean to sound too zen about this, but the journey is the cool part, not the destination. There just aren't any adventure games even remotely like Eastern Mind. Except Myst. Well, that's a stretch. But if you like the exploratory aspects of Myst and have a taste for the psychedelic and bizarre, this will definitely keep you entertained.